I'm sitting in my favourite place in the whole world, down on the back shore at Brora. It's very tranquil today, the sea is lapping and the gulls are in the air. But if we could time travel back to the mid 18th century, it would be a whole different scene and a lot of activity because I'm sitting at the site of Brora's early salt and coal industries. My relationship with uh, the back beach at Brora goes back to when I was a bairn and many of the Brora kids who used to come down here, jump off the sand dunes, make camps in the wind bushes. But we were also aware of these huge uh, stone walls right down on the beach. We used to play in them, we used to hang off the doorway lintels and probably help to destabilise the structure. Later on in my adult life, I was very fortunate and privileged to be part of the Brora Salt Pans excavation. And through that collaboration with the Scape Trust, we uh, excavated the remains of Scotland's earliest coal-fired salt pans. And little did I know that earlier this year that we would be reviving Brora's salt making industry and actually making the first salt at Brora for nearly 200 years. So yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm from Brora <laughs> and um, uh, that little clip was taken um, sitting right there in the remains of uh, the oldest salt works at Brora um, and this is what Joe's going to talk about in a, a short while. And I live up here, so this was my playground down here. So it uh, doesn't take too much of a stretch of the imagination that I kind of got involved in industrial archaeology. Um, but it didn't really happen until my mid-20s. Um, this um, image here shows one of the pretty bad photographs I took um, over 20 years ago um, of walls which were right down here on the beach. And as you can see in this aerial photograph, they're, they're gone. Uh, but this was the first um, photographic record I took of uh, the uh, eroding archaeology of the salt pans on the back shore. But if you ask anybody from Brora about, or when I started investigating Brora's salt uh, working um, history, um, if you asked anybody really um, about that, people would look at me quite quizzical because people are much more familiar with Brora's industrial heritage and they are much more familiar with the coal works here. And this is a coal works which is located up the river Brora at a place called Faskely. And that coal works um, was uh, re-established in, uh, in the 1870s and it continued until 1974 when it closed for the final time. And that's really the core of, um, there were many other industries in Brora, but, but this is what people really remember when you talk about industrial history of Brora. So this is the image it conjures up, the coal miners, and here is a group of people who worked at the brickworks, which was associated with the clay pits at the coal mine. And you can notice there's some women in this picture as well. So Brora has been famed over the years as the electric city. We had electric lighting um, in our streets when some of the towns of Scotland didn't have lighting. It was called the Manchester of the North and the industrial capital of Sutherland, which grew around the investment of the Sutherland landowners. And then um, people did know, yes, we have the, we, we, we claim the most northerly coal pit uh, in the UK. So when I started this investigation over 20 years ago, um, looking into uh, what remains in, what remained in Brora, or, you know, what, what about the salt industry could I find? Um, there was Salt Street in an area which was our fisher town, Lower Brora down here, and this is Salt Street here, so a row of buildings. And if you can align that 
with this old map here. This is where Salt Street is here. And look, at the end of Salt Street, across the road, and this um, is Salt Pans and Salt Store, and you can see the cisterns. So I knew from this old plan of Brora, uh, dated 1811 to 1813, so I knew that in Lower Brora, and some people in the village also said, yes, we had salt works at Brora, and they were just down at Lower Brora here in the old Fisher town, just opposite there. And I went, yeah, but I said, but there's actually um, archaeology much further along the beach um, to the south, uh, maybe about, um, well, you know, maybe less than a quarter of a, a well, kilometer away. And I said, but I think they're salt works as well. So how many salt works has Brora got? Um, another bit of salt facts about Brora as well. Um, so in these buildings here, when they went out of use, because these buildings, this salt works buildings here, they were part of the industrialization of the highlands uh, or at the time of the highland clearances when the landowners were creating employment for the displaced crofters. So here um, in these buildings, they, when they went out of use in 1826, they were converted into accommodation for fisher folk. And we've even got in the valuation, ro uh, valuation records some of the residents living at the salt pans, Brora. And we've also got Salt Street here. So this was some more evidence of this period of salt making, the early 19th century. But that wasn't the salt works that I was interested in. I wanted to take the story further back into the 18th century and even further back into the 1600s. So we have different periods of salt making at Brora, is, that's the answer. Um, so on that aerial photograph where you, you saw that eroding archaeology, um, over 20 years ago, and I, I, I know the, so it was a very cold um, winter's um, uh, day, and I was doing, um, um, I, was, I was down at the back shore and I was doing this course through Aberdeen University, an archaeology course. And, I was looking and I was trying to work out what all this was that I was seeing uh, in terms of the archaeology. I could see the massive walls. I, yeah, that's fair. I, yeah, I can, t I can tell a wall at least, but I couldn't make sense of these sections in the, the eroding sections um, down on the beach. The black seams, burnt brick, uh, mortar, all sorts of things were appearing and it just seemed like a bit of a jumble to me I, and I wasn't you know uh, expert in industrial archaeology but somebody in the village the late Rob Wilson a very well known uh, uh, well local historian um, and he lived to a ripe old age and he said he said to me oh that's the coal road and I went what coal road he says that that's the coal road so he no, he didn't, he didn't know what it related to, but that was his terminology. He says, that's the coal road. Um, let me have a wee look here. So it was really important to speak to locals, and I thought, am I ever going to discover what this coal road is? So as part of my studies um, with Aberdeen University, um, I had to record a site uh, where I lived. Obviously, I picked those buildings on the beach. So I went through the process of desk-based assessments, looking at all the map evidence, all that kind of stuff. I didn't really go into the estate records at that time. I was just grappling around to see what I could get. And I went to Inverness one day to, um, you, you might be familiar with Leakey's second-hand bookshop. And there, um, I actually thought, I'm gonna set myself a task. I'm gonna look through all the books and I'm going to see if I can find a book about salt making. Um, and would you believe it, Chris? This is the book that I found. And it was the only book on salt making in uh, that bookshop. And that's a huge bookshop. Um, and I read this book and it absolutely, uh, literally blew my mind because I didn't really know much about Scotland's salt industry. And certainly from reading uh, this book, um, I started to understand some of the archaeology I was seeing down the beach and, and I was getting to grips and understanding how salt was made, 
what type of structures you would need, um, and also some of the documentation that would be useful in the research. So certainly, uh, Chris, I'd like to thank you for certainly highlighting all those highly useful resources that not just I, but many other people interested in SALT have used over the years. Um, also, this is a good. This is another reference: the, Earl, um, the history of the earldom of Sutherland, written by Jean Gordon's uh, son, uh, Sir Robert Gordon, which Joe will go into, and it has some of our earliest references of salt making at Brora in the 1600, well, early 1600s. And then this book here by John Owen, an ex-coal miner, came to Brora. Um, and what's great about this book is he alludes to salt and coal industries, but he also talks about the archaeology as well. So from, from what John had investigated, uh, oh no, oh, um, it, was, it was a lot of really good information. So my early attempt was to go down the back shore. This is without any um, knowledge of any organisations that could help with broader archaeology. So I tried to save the salt pans myself. <laughs> Jackie with salt bags at a wall. Um, uh, salt bags versus sea, what do you think is going to win? Yeah, say no more. So my humble attempts, uh, not knowing much about it, but I did my best, honestly. Uh, we lost the sandbags. Um, so this is when um, I joined Klein Heritage Society um, and um, I brought it to the society's attention. And also I said, you know, I, I think we should really do something about this. And I'd heard about, I did, I did a bit of research, heard about the Scape Trust. And um, so I, I contacted uh, the Scape Trust and it was Tom that I spoke to. And Tom was, seemed to be as enthusiastic as I was. And he actually said, I'll come to Brora. And I was absolutely delighted that um, straight away we got uh, that support. And it started a hugely um, productive, um, and I, I have to say over the years I've made some great friends with Tom, Joe and all the other people we've worked with. Um, so I just want to thank you, Tom, for coming to Brewer and starting um, all this off. Um, and you were quite impressed by what you saw there, Tom. Hopefully you still are. Um, and I would say that community archaeo we, if, if we don't have community archaeologists, we don't have community archaeology. And it's hugely important. I have worked in Norway, Iceland. There's no foundations for community archaeology over there. We're so fortunate over here. And I'd, again, I just want to allude to some of the people we've worked with. Um, and this is Kathy Dag, who you, you may, may have met. Uh, this is Janet, who couldn't be here today. And that's Joe looking down, because I never seem to get a photo of you looking up. But anyway, because you're so busy. But it's really important um, in terms of um, you know, all the, the man hours and the time, the women hours <coughs> and time put into this pro these projects. And uh, I think we really have to acknowledge that you know, to be able to come to a community excavation to do with salt works, it, you know, we are really fortunate and we should never ever take it for granted. But it's the foundation of of what it, the meaningful heritage for a community to be involved in an excavation and to be involved in the research. You've got to bring people on board, otherwise it's just a report that sits on a dusty shelf. So SALT brings people together. Uh, over the years, we've had so many people that have benefited from coming to our digs. We're a SALTer family. Um, it's really good uh, for your health and well-being. Um, at the moment in time of you know, COVID where we're all you know, anxious, um, we can get outdoors. It's great for, you know, I mean, if you've got a few brain cells that are still going like myself, it's really good because it gets the old, I'm sure you've sat over many features of salt pans and gone, what is that? And uh, we've done a lot of that over the years. Um, and you know, some people that have actually, I have been with, um, that have come to uh, the Brewer salt pans from the local community um, and out with the area are sadly no longer with us. But I'm so fortunate that we had that time with them and that they were able to experience being on the, uh, part of the salt pan family that we established. Um, so just want to, to say that. Um, and 
this is really important as well. So the archaeology, salt making at Brora, um, as I said to you at the beginning, not, you know, we didn't really know much about salt making as a community at Brora uh, before uh, the Salt Pans project. But it's important, the, these young children that have come down to the digs, these are our future salters. These are the children that will keep the salt making heritage of Scotland alive. And it's up to communities, that's their responsibility, it's their job to get salt pans established, to get kids, to, not just kids, to get everybody of all ages involved in these projects. We were very uh, delighted in 2010 that with the hard work of the local community, the Herit Klein Heritage Society and the Scape Trust that we won this fieldwork award. One of the things I'm really quite, um, um, everybody thinks I'm, um, I'm really kind of a bit uh, fanatical about the, the waste products and the byproducts of salt making. And this was one of the treasures that we came across. So I'm really, um, this, this is one of the highlights. It was, yes, we have the archeology. span Yes, we have the documentation, but this is in my hand and it's tangible evidence. The salt's not there but this byproduct, the pan scratch, the pan stone, the residues that attach itself to the salt pan uh, is there for you to find. And we've got piles of it at Brora. So that was a real highlight for me. And there's loads of it at the back you can have a look at. So this is us now, an uh, 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 incarnation but of uh, the research side of the salt pans project. So a few years ago, we just got together and thought, you know, we've had a few, yeah, we, ha we had a few years off and we thought we just want to get back into our research again. Bring researchers, archaeologists, um, you know, share industrial heritage. Um, it's based around the Brewer salt pans, but it's, it's kind of a wider remit. It's just a lot of enthusiastic people that love getting together and doing research and sharing that with everybody. So we've got the salt pans uh, research group that we do. We meet for cups of tea and we get out and about and we do a lot of activities. We survey uh, myself and my, uh, my friend Penny here. We coordinate uh, the Salt Pans Research Group, um, but there's lots of people that are involved in it. And over lockdown, we, um, we were surveying uh, some of the sites because what else would you do in, lo um, in between lockdowns? You know, get down onto the back shore and use that time. So this is a midden um, to do, it's a, it's, a, it's a coal pit midden here. So uh, Joe will t be talking about that later. And this is a su suspected <coughs> uh, um, bucket pot. Um, we've done some research on the shipping lists showing uh, salt cargoes, uh, where it's going to here as well. This is another area of research we're going to continue. We've done walks um, again. Uh, last was it last year two years ago we did uh, a mammoth uh, walk around Brora I think we started off with about 50 people and we ended up with about four because because it was about seven at, no it wasn't but it was a great walk it was fantastic uh, but we ended up down at the salt pan everything ends at the salt pans you know that's the thing we had a wonderful library display that's still on at the moment. Lots of people have come in and, and we've been collecting lots of amazing oral histories and information um, about uh, the industrial heritage of Brora. We've been meeting people. So up here we have uh, you know, uh, families of coal miners and people. This couple here actually live on a, on a tramway. So the tramway's at the back of their house. So we collect all this history. It's a living heritage. And two years ago, we also um, excavated uh, a wagon road down on the back shore. And this is where we uh, have to, again, acknowledge the great input and the expertise um, from the wagonway project who are all sitting at the back. And what great uh, guys and gals you are. And you've really done so much for um, salt and coal industries in, in what you do, as well as all the other representatives here today and uh, Scotland Oldest Railway as well. Um, so, yes, as you saw in Tom's film, um, through the collaboration with the Wagonway and Klein Heritage Society, we built a salt pan at Brora. We are making salt tomorrow. We hope you all come along to have a look at the salt that we're, we're making. We've got salt on sale, did I mention that? Um, 
And um, another thing here is that the group from Kokenzi have actually put a salt making manual together. We've got copies at the back. And I think this is an amazing piece of work that they've done. Um, so we've brought, um, we brought salt making back to Brora and I just think it's an absolute wonderful thing. Um, so we appealed for volunteers. So we've got um, a group of people that will have been trained up by the guys from Gary, all hail Gary Master Salter, um, <laughs> who's trained up our Brora volunteers and um, we've made salt with Gary and we've made it another couple of times and uh, everything's going very well, Gary, thank you. <laughs> So this is a Barora Sea Salt Batch 1. Um, we were delighted to, um, to achieve this momentous moment in Barora's uh, continuing salt making heritage. And just for you, Penny, there you are. Um, <laughs> because brown rig and all these men, you know, so I just thought it's about time we had a few female salters represented in Brora's salt-making heritage. And um, you, this is the way you probably will see me and Penny most, spend most of our time under big hats and things down the back shore. But I'm just trying to get over to you, it's really important to have a living heritage of salt making and to bring the community into this. And we've really got to acknowledge the input by uh, Scotland's community archaeology and the Scape Trust and local organisations like Klein Heritage Society and the Borough Salt Pans Group, um, all working together. Thank you.